this tutorial, we will look at making the Hoover synth sound, and more generally at using the clone object to create dense masses of sound very quickly and easily. We will look again at the cloned object from tutorial number 3. We therefore need two patches, one to store our cloned object, and one to host the clone. Make sure you save both in the same folder. Also make sure the clone patch doesn't have any spaces in the file name. This version of the Hoover synth is based on Super Collider example created by the user, SnapPits. See below for a link. In the left hand patch, the host, we create a clone object to host our right hand patch. We give it a voice number, 8 for example. As you may remember from tutorial 3, adding inlets and outlets in the clone creates inlets and outlets in the object. Make sure your outlet has the tilde for audio output. Now let's make some sound in our clone patch. This is a single oscillator. The left hand patch will contain 8 versions of the right hand patch in the cloned object. All the versions play currently the same tone though, so it is hard to tell. If we include a random object in the patch then the 8 voices will all be different, so we get 8 different random sign tones. We can also trigger this from the main patch by adding an inlet to the clone patch, and then sending a message with the word all. This makes sure all 8 voices receive the trigger message. Instead of completely randomized tones we could also make random harmonics of a particular tone. Here, each voice multiplies 55 by a different whole number so that all of the notes are harmonics of 55 Hz. Finally, we could also make the patch play all the harmonics in order using the special $1 notation. Inside the cloned object, the $1 outputs the voice number 1, 2, 3, etc. So each voice plays a different harmonic. We can add harmonics to our tone by adding more voices. We will now use this approach to build up the dense, buzzing, Hoover sound. We are going to use a wavetable as we did in tutorial number 9. First we add an array. Give it a name like sawtooth and change the size to 2051. We are going to populate the wavetable with a rich sort pattern. You can find this message object in the files for this tutorial or the last tutorial if you don't want to write down all of these numbers. Make sure you change the table name though to match the sawtooth array as we are doing here. Whoops, that was a square wave. Here's the sawtooth. We will play the sawtooth wavetable back in our cloned object.
We are going to set the patch up so that it takes a frequency in as an audio signal. This passes the value to all the voices by default. We are then going to randomize that number slightly by multiplying it by a number that is nearly, but not quite, 1. Here we create a very small random number and add it to 0 0.97. We get a rich buzzing sound, but there is also a phasing sound that does not sound right. We need to make the tones avoid each other a little more. We do this by adding a slightly randomized delay to add a temporal offset. Add a del right object with a name as an argument that includes the special dollar zero symbol. This makes sure that the different delay lines in the different clones are all distinct from each other. Add a corresponding del read with the same name, and randomize the delay time with a low bang. The delays here will all be between 0 and 10. Let's create a bit more space by moving the wavetable into a subpatch. Now we're going to add a little bit of simple distortion. We use the arcdown function to implement soft clipping. That stops the volume ever going above one, but as the gain is pushed higher, the sound distorts more and more. We 
will then smooth out the distorted sound with a reverb. Here we are going to use the Freeverb object that doesn't come with pure data as standard. So you'll need to add it. You can do this under the help. Find externals menu option, then search for Freeverb. We give it some appropriate parameters for room size and wet dry mix in a message. Let's try that. Fucking nice one. One final thing that we will add is the distinctive Hoover pitch envelope. We will do this with a V-line object that takes a long message telling it what values to move through and how long to take. We are going to specify transpositions as MIDI notes. So zero means no pitch change, one means go up a semitone, two means go up two semitones and so on. Our envelope here says to start at minus five and go to plus six in 100 milliseconds. Then go down to zero in 1700 milliseconds. So the pitch goes up fast and comes down slow. Try out different values for yourself. We need to translate these values to ratios, though, so that we can multiply our base frequency by this value. We can this with the following, slightly complicated formula. You can often find this in the transratio object, but you can also copy it here. Use this to scale the frequency value. That sounds fucking radical. Finally, let's tidy everything up into a neat sub-patch and test it. <laughs> 